Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Reject Films, continuing on with the collection videos for 2019. <clears throat> um, going to do the uh, Vestrons, uh, the few Umbrella Entertainment releases that I have, along with the uh, MVD uh, rewind, eh, rewind Collection, which I don't have very many of those either, so I'm just going to throw all these together in one video. And... Uh, I do have the one up for the Warner Archive, which I think is like 15 titles, if you guys want to check that one out. Uh, that one's a pretty recent one, but I will leave a card up as well for um, the reviews for these. I have all the way up to um, uh, Parents in the Vestron series, uh, full reviews for on the channel. Some of them are pretty old, so it's just easier if I just leave the link to the uh, reviews card and you guys can find them in that section and that playlist but uh yeah uh, I was kind of debating on whether to not to make this video tonight um, it's been a real stressful week week at work and I just kind of wanted to spend some time after I got back uh, you know talking about movies and stuff and always just kind of relaxes me some more and uh, you know get out there and uh, communicate with you guys so I don't know when this is going to go up. I think it's Friday the 11th uh, today, I do believe. Uh, I'll probably upload it tonight or tomorrow, something like that. Uh, it's supposed to be a crap load of snow here in the uh, Indianapolis area uh, tomorrow, so um, I'll be stuck inside anyways. But uh, yeah, um, also I want to say uh, a shout out to my buddy uh, Patrick, I'll just say his name is Patrick. Uh, he is a, not a fellow YouTuber, but somebody I met through YouTube like shortly after I started. So I've known him for quite some time now. Does reviews online, written reviews, and uh, does a really great job. We've been pretty good friends for, you know, like say a couple years now. And uh, always talking about movies and stuff. And, uh, I've never really given him a shout out, so I, I feel re really bad about that, but he is, uh, like I said, a, a great reviewer uh, on the written reviews, and uh, so I will try to remember to leave a link in this video. If I do not, I am so sorry, because there is no other way for you guys to uh, find him, because I don't know off the top of my head what it what it was called, but uh, I will try to leave that link in the description. Check out his, uh, I guess, blog, or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, it does a lot of uh, IFC stuff. He reviews for Warner Archive as well, uh, like I do, and uh, some other companies. So, yeah, check his stuff out. It's really good, and uh, I'll continue on now with the video. Uh, so we'll start with the Vestrons. I'll, I'll try not to talk about the movies too much and just kind of get through it. But, uh, like I said, there's reviews for the first uh, seven of these. Uh, number one in the series here. I don't know what is all over my slips. They got kind of funky uh, moving them. But uh, this Chopping Mall. Uh, enjoyed this one quite a bit. There's no reversible art or anything on these, as you guys probably already know. Uh, there are some features on here. It's going to be shiny and hard to read, but uh, you do have some audio commentaries uh, with the director and and the co-writer and second unit director uh, you got shock till you drop uh, uh, back to the mall is uh, one of the features uh, chopping chopping mall the editing part of it uh, the kill bots scoring chopping mall the Robot Speaks, The Lost Scene, Army of One, Chopping Mall, Creating the Killbots. Uh, the features on here are really good. I've watched all of them and I uh, enjoyed them quite a bit. I don't know what happened. Anyway, um, yeah, Chopping Mall, number one in the uh, Vestron line. Which, right now, this one, I believe, is on sale on Amazon or something. And then number two in the series is Blood Diner. This one's a one a lot of people really like, but I honestly wasn't that big of a fan of it. I think, you know, um, I, I say that in my review. It was a long time ago I did the review for it, but uh, 
it was okay. It just, I don't know, I guess one of those ones I was so excited for and then kind of let down. But, uh, yeah, chopping, or chopping off, Blood Diner. Uh, you do have some features on here. You got audio commentary with director, uh, featurettes, uh, Queen Kong, the cook, the uncle and the detective, open for business, scoring, uh, Shitar, you are what you eat. You got an archival interview with project consultant Eric Caden, theatrical trailer, TV spots, and still gallery. Uh, quite a few on here as well. I believe I watched all of them. Uh, this one here I enjoyed quite a bit. Man, uh, these slips got kind of jacked up. I hate moving stuff. Uh, wax work one and two, number three in these series. Uh, I enjoyed both these, uh, especially the first one. Um, but I enjoyed the second one as well. And features on here, wax work one, you got, uh, audio commentary with Anthony Hickox and Zach, uh, Galligan. Theatrical trailer, still gallery, and then the featurettes are Waxwork Chronicles, parts one through six, and a vintage making of featurette. Waxwork two, there's hardly anything. You get an audio commentary with Anthony Hickox and Zach Galligan, a theatrical trailer, and still gallery. So not much on the second one there, but uh, this one did have a, you can have Waxwork or Waxwork two as your, um, as your cover art. I just stick with the uh, first one. First one is the, the better of the two films, but um, I enjoyed both of them. And then uh, probably still my favorite of the series, which I haven't watched all of them yet, but uh, Return of the Living Dead 3. I just love this movie. I don't know. Um, I mean, she is... Gorgeous, uh, perfect body on her, just, uh, and just a really good movie. I, I don't know, I wish I had seen this movie sooner than I did. I didn't see it till I got this, and, uh, the transfer is amazing. Uh, transfers on all these are really good, but, uh, this one's still, uh, probably one of the best transfers out of all of them. Uh, you do get audio commentary with director Brian uh, Usna. Actress uh, Melinda Clark, special makeup effects artist, and a conversation with director Brian uh, Yuzna and screenwriter John Penny. Interviews with special effects artist Steve Johnson and Chris Nelson. Interviews with produ production executive David Trippett and editor, post-production supervisor Christopher Roth. Theatrical trailers and a still gallery. I know you probably can't see shit, but, uh, yeah, awesome movie. I definitely recommend this one. If you guys are fans of zombie movies and stuff, definitely get this. It, it's a no-brainer, I guess. Oh, my least favorite of the series so far. Chud, too, bud, the chud. Kind of a dud. Um... Audio commentary on here with the director, interviews with actor Garrett Graham and actress uh, Teresa Lee, special effects artist Alan Apone, uh, video trailer and still gallery, not much for features on here, but who gives a shit because this movie was kind of garbage. Right. Had a few moments, but uh, overall, just didn't really care for it. The weirdest movie of the bunch so far being... Uh, layer of the White Worm. Uh, I just recently did this review, finally. Uh, with uh, Hugh Grant in here. Uh, one of his very early films. Got audio commentaries on here with uh, the director and Lisa Russell in conversation with film historian Matthew Malia, featurette of uh, Warm Food, the effects of Layer of the White Worm, interviews, uh, cutting for Ken with editor... Uh, Peter Davies, Mary Mary with actress Sammy Davies, Davis. Uh, trailers and gallery, trailers from hell featuring producer Dan Ireland, theatrical trailers, still gallery. A uh, few features on here. Um, I still really don't know how I feel about this movie. This movie is just bizarre. But uh, 
Definitely worth getting, though. Um, haven't really seen anything else like it. And this is one I did the latest review on. And that is Parents. Pretty decent movie. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. You get an audio commentaries on here with director uh, Bob Balaban and producer Bonnie Paliff. Isolated score uh, selections, audio interview with composer Jonathan Elias or Elias. I'm terrible with names. So, uh, featurettes are Leftovers to Be with screenwriter Christopher Hawthorne, Mother's Day with actress Mary Beth Hurt, Inside Out with director of photography Robert or Robin uh, Vigian, Vintage Taste with uh, decorative consultant Yolando. Oh, am I going to attempt to pronounce this last name? Uh, theatrical trailer, radio spots, and a still gallery. So this is the last one I have uh, full reviews for uh, on the channel there. But uh, you get Randy Quaid in here, Mary Beth Hurt, Sandy, uh, Dennis. Hmm. I don't know what else I was looking at. This one here, I, I actually have the... Um, review recorded for a long time ago and i just got to edit it and everything and i will get this one out there next and that is the gate i enjoyed the hell out of this one too thought it was uh really really good um i haven't seen the gate 2 uh, i thought about picking up that screen factory but uh let me know if the gate 2 is any good if it's worth grabbing but uh really enjoyed this one a lot this one has um oh what's his name yeah, that guy. Da, 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 da. Shit. Is it Stephen Dorf? Ethan Hawk? Stephen Dorf? Hell, I don't remember. One of those two. Doesn't say on here either, huh? Uh, you got quite a few features on here, too. You got a bunch of audio commentaries with directors and a special effects designer and all that. I'm not going to read all these. There's uh, quite a few on here. Isolated score selections and audio interview. Featurettes, The Gate Unlocked, uh, Minion Maker, From Hell It Came, the, the Workman Speaks, Made in Canada, From Hell, The Creatures and Demons of the Gate, The Gatekeepers, Vintage Featurette, Making of the Gate, Teaser Trailer, Theatrical Trailer, TV Spot, Storyboard Gallery, Behind the Scenes Still Gallery. Uh, I say tons of stuff on here. And uh, I've watched all these features, too, and they're pretty good. So I will let you guys read the rest of them if you can see anything on this terrible lighting. Is it? Oh, yeah, it says it right there. Stephen Dorf. I don't know why. I, was, I knew that's what it was. I don't know why I said Ethan Hawke. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's been a long week. I'm usually really good about remembering who was in what, but uh, yeah. Definitely recommend this one too. I'd say this and uh, Chopping Mall and Return of Living Dead 3 plus this next one I'm getting ready to show are definite no-brainers and a couple more. Uh, yeah, definitely pick up the gate if you guys have not. I don't remember how good the transfer was on that. I think... I think it was pretty decent though. Like I say, a lot a lot of these are, are really good. This one here, um, I'm just gonna do a standalone review for the uh, first film, just because I want to. Um, there we used to do a podcast on here called the Horror Movie Project which uh, I want to get back to uh, with my buddy, Dead Michael. Um, had a lot of fun doing that, and uh, we did a podcast on here. I will try to... Uh, yeah, I'll probably just leave a card for the uh, podcast playlist if you guys want to click on that. Check out the one we did for this whole series. That is the Wishmaster Collection, uh, one through four. Uh, Wishmaster... Wishmaster 2, Evil Never Dies, 3, Beyond the Gates of Hell, and 4, Being the Prophecy Fulfilled. Uh, I enjoy all of them. Uh, of course, the first one is the best one, but uh, it's a pretty pretty good set. 
say no reversible art on here either. And even all the disc art's the same. And you got one, two, and then three and four are on uh, the same disc. And there's only features, I believe, on the first one, really. You have uh, some audio commentaries with Robert Kurtzman and screenwriter Peter Atkins and the dire and director Robert Kurtzman and stars Andrew Divoff and uh, Tammy Lauren. Isolated score sections, an audio interview with composer Harry Manfre uh, Manfredini. I always mess up his name, but a uh, really well-known composer. Uh, featurettes, Out of the Bottle, The Magic Wars, uh, The Jen and Alexandra. Alex yeah, Alexandra. Captured Visions, Wish List, Vintage Featurette, Making of Wishmaster, Trailers, TV Spots, Galleries, Teaser and Theatrical Trailers, TV and Radio Spots, Storyboard and Seal Galleries, Behind the Scenes, Footage, Compilation. Uh, quite a few on the first one. Second one, you just have some audio commentary and a trailer. Third one, audio commentaries and a Vintage Featurette, Making of. <clears throat> And the fourth one, you have some audio commentaries and a featurette, Wish Masterpiece, The Eater. Which I can't remember if I watched all these or not, but uh, yeah, really good set. I uh, definitely recommend picking this one up as well. I think there was an issue, it was either three or four. I don't know if anybody else had the issue, but there was like some uh, skipping in the disc or something uh, with it there towards the end when uh, they're fighting. But, uh, I think it was three or four. I don't remember. But, uh, one of them, there towards the end. It's been a while since I've watched all of them. And I watched them all, like, back to back to back to back. So, uh, this, was, from here on, I haven't watched these versions. I've seen a couple of the ones coming up. But, uh, I have not seen this one yet. And that is The Unholy. This one looks okay. It doesn't really look great to me. <clears throat> but uh have to get them all quite a few features on here you got audio commentary of director Cam camilio villa isolated score selections and audio interview with uh composer roger bellin audio interview with production designer and co-writer fernando francesca uh featuring isolated selections with his uh, new score uh, some featurettes, Sins of the Father with Ben Cross, Demons in the Flesh, uh, The Monsters of the Unholy, Prayer Offerings with Fernando Fonseca, I, I'm so bad with names, uh, Original ending, ending featuring optional audio commentary with producer Matthew Hayden, Theatrical Trailer, TV Spots, Radio Spots, Storyboard Galleries, Still Gallery, so quite a few features on here. Um, so the trailer looked okay, uh, not something I was just dying to have, but, um, so you, if you got one best drawing, you gotta have more. I haven't been showing the size. That is number 10, by the way. And I still have not seen any of these. I hear the first one's really good, but nobody really seems to care for the sequels too much. That is the Warlock Collection. Uh, of course, you got Warlock, Warlock Armageddon, and Warlock 3, The End of Innocence. Uh, quite a few features on the first one. You have audio commentary, director Steve Miner, isolated score selections, and audio interview with author Jeff Bond, interviews uh, Satan's Son with actor Julian Sands, The Devil's Work with director Steve Miner. Effects of Evil, the uh, makeup effects creators Carl Fullerton and Neil Martz. Behind the scenes footage. Vintage interview segments with the cast and crew. Vintage featurette with Carl Fullerton and Neil Martz. Uh, vintage uh, featurette with visual effects supervisors Patrick Red Johnson and Robert Habros. Animation supervisor Morano Maressa. And May artist. Robert Skiffo. A lot of Roberts in the movie industry. Uh, theatrical trailer, video trailer, TV spots, still gallery. Uh, for Warlock 2 Armageddon, you have Idol Commentary Director Anthony Hickox, vintage making a featurette, behind the scenes footage, extended vintage interview segments with actor Julian Sands, uh, director Anthony Hickox, and actress Paula Marshall. 
theatrical trailer, TV spot, still gallery for the third one. End of Innocence, you get uh, behind the scenes footage, vintage interview segments with cast and crew, trailer, video sales promo, and a still gallery. So all of them actually have quite a few features. Of course, the most being on the first one, but uh, yeah, still look forward to checking these out. I gotta really get through these. Um, but uh, I guess you get the first one and then, uh, yeah, two and three are on the same disc. It kind of sucks. I wish they'd put them all on their own disc along with the uh, Wish Masters. But um, and this this here and I know Wish Master were done by the same artist, the dude designs. It'd be nice if the disc had different artwork too, along with Wishmaster. But, uh, yeah, my throat is just so uh, itchy and dry. All right. This one looks like a lot of fun. I've heard good things. That is number uh, 12, Slaughter High. I know uh, there was a, people had, like, the Arrow uh, DVD of this. It started selling when this one came out. Um, yeah, this looks like a blast. Uh, on here you have audio commentary with writers, directors, George uh, Dugdell and Peter Lytton. Lytton. Audio interview with composer Harry <laughs> Manfredini featuring isolated music and special effects uh, selections. Featurettes are going to pieces with co-writer, director, Mark Ezra, My Days at Doddsville, and with actress Caroline Monroe, alternate still sequence, theatrical trailer, radio spots, and a still gallery. Uh, yeah, like I said, the, the trailer to this looks like a blast, and I kind of skimmed through it. Uh, a lot of these I did unboxings for, too, if you guys want to check any of those out. I do the menu screens and all that on the old uh, TV over there. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So it's like a lot of fun. Really gotta get to that. I got a lot to watch before that one. This is another one I'm not too sure of. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna like it or not, to be honest. But that is Gothic. It's number 13 in the Vestra Online there. Uh, you got audio commentary on here with Lisa Russell in conversation with film historian Matthew M Malia. Isolated score selections and audio interview with composer Thomas Dolby. Featurettes are The Soul of Shelley with actor Julian Sands. Fear Itself with screenwriter Stephen Volk. One Rainy Night with director of photography Mike Southern. Uh, theatrical trailer, TV spot, and a still gallery. They all have those nice, lovely still galleries that I really don't care. Ah. Uh. This is another one I hear really great things about. Um, that is Class of 1999. Which I still gotta watch Class of 1984. Screen That's a whole nother. Anyway, uh, this, the trailer looked really, really cool though. Uh, definitely excited to check this one out as well. I don't know why I keep taking them out like there's different artwork on this. But uh, on here you have audio commentary, producer, director, Mark Lester, interviews, School Safety with uh, producer, director, Mark Lester, and co-producer, Eugene Mozilla. Uh, new Rules with screenwriter, Courtney, or C. Courtney Joyner. Cyber Teachers from Hell, special effects creators, Eric Allard and Rick Stratton. Future of Discipline with director of photography, Mark Irwin. Theatrical trailer, TV spots. Still gallery and a video promo, but yeah, this one looks uh, like a cheesy, fun, really good hell of a time. So definitely look forward to that one. Uh, this one I have seen. I have not watched the best Ryan release. I have the uh, DVD still. That is Beyond Reanimator. Tons of fun. I uh, haven't seen it in quite some time, but I remember just having a blast with this one. Um, this is one that was on a sale on Amazon, and uh, I price matched Best Buy in store. I think it was on sale for mm, right right around twenty bucks or something. But uh, yeah, Jeffrey Combs, uh, 
just a blast. Uh, I mean, open this one yet, it's still shrink wrapped. But, uh, yeah, I'm not opening anything until I watch it from now on on the uh, antique label stuff. Just so I know that, hey, I need to watch that. Uh, this one gets a lot of love and gets a lot of hate. I have not seen this, but I finally watched the trailer. I always saw the DVD of it floating around and the weird cover the DVD had just never really did anything for me. I don't know. And then I finally watched the trailer, like I said, and to me, it kind of has like a water world feel to it. And I really actually enjoy water world. So, um, I could be completely wrong, but, uh, Enjoy most most of the uh, H.P. Lovecraft uh, movies, so that is Dagon. Um, tons of features on here, too. You get audio commentary of director Stuart Gordon and screenwriter Dennis... I can't say his last name. Uh, audio commentary of director Stuart Gordon and star Ezra Godden. Interviews, Gods and Monsters, a discussion with director Stuart Gordon, interviewed by filmmaker Mick Garris. I do know that name. Uh, Shadows over Mbaka, I guess that's a place in the movie or something, an interview with produ producer Brian Yuzna, uh, Fist Stories, an interview with S.T. Uh, Joshi, uh, author of I Am Providence, The Life and Times of H.P. Lovecraft, Vintage, EPK featurette, archival interviews with Stuart Gordon, Ezra Godden, and other cast and crew, uh, conceptual art gallery from artist Richard... Rap horse, rap. Nobody ever has normal names. Uh, storyboard gallery, still gallery, and theatrical trailer. So, yeah, packed full of features. And this is too, uh, I picked this up at the same time as uh, the animator there, so I uh, have not opened that one yet either. Uh, I do apologize. Uh, I, I kind of just stopped doing the unboxing menu screens for the new ones. I just, I, I did do one for this next one. Uh, I haven't really bought hardly anything in the last six, seven months, so, um, yeah. Especially not when it comes out, unless it drops in price like those two did. You know, I had to grab them. But, uh, uh, Maximum Overdrive. I have seen this one. I think everybody has seen this movie. Everybody knows it's cheesy as hell, but we all love it because it's fucking Maximum Overdrive. I mean... Estevez, ACDC, Stephen King, the freaking Goblin, and you know, uh, it's Maximum Overdrive. You know, uh, I finally watched uh, Trucks the other the other day on a uh, Hulu or something, and uh, Trucks is a better film than this. I will say that, but this is just so much fun. I just I love it. Number seventeen. This is the last one they released. And I actually grabbed this at Walmart. A lot of you guys know Walmart got this in for some reason. The only Vestron ever to appear in Walmart shelves. So um, they might still have some at some of them. I don't think any of the ones around me have this anymore sitting out. But uh, yeah, and it was only like 20 something dollars there too. It was like less than, most of them come out at like 35 bucks. And this was, you know, at least $10 less than that tons and tons of features on here i have not actually watched the movie again yet because i want to do a review on it um and watch it again then but i did watch all of these features and there is a ton and that is not focusing worth nothing but uh i'll try i'll try to uh, audio commentary with writer tony writer tony because i don't know how to say a last name Author of Hollywood, Stephen King. Audio commentary by actor and comedian Jonah Ray and Blumhouse Film executive Ryan Turek. Interviews consist of Truck Stop Tells, an interview with producer Martha D. Can't pronounce the last name. Rage Against the Machines, an interview with actress Laura Harrington. Honeymoon Horrors, an interview with actor John Short and actress Yeardley Smith. Maximum Carnage, an interview with makeup effects creator dean gates a kid in a king's court an interview with actor holter graham the Wil wilmington factor a look back at filming maximum overdrive with members of the production crew in north carolina who made who an interview with 
Murray Englehart, co-author of ACDC Maximum Rock and Roll. Goblin Resurrects, the restoration of Happy of the Happy Toys Goblin. Uh, behind the scenes footage, still gallery, theatrical trailer, TV spots, and more. And I did do an unboxing for this. So if you guys want to check that out, you can see the menu screen and all that. That uh, restoration of the... And the dude bought the front here of this. You know, they burn it to hell. And it's just completely destroyed. He redid the whole thing. And it's a pretty cool uh, feature on here. So, Sorry, I'm using more bad language than usual in this video. Because I just don't really care right now. I'm just trying to have fun and talk about movies. Alright. Um... We will move on now to the few Umbrella releases. I want to get more of them, but it seems like a lot of stuff that Umbrella released, either somebody else already has, or right after I get the Umbrella release, somebody else does. I really like their releases a lot. I think their um, <coughs> transfers are really good. I like the artwork on a lot of them, and I don't know, just something about the company that I like, just like 88 Films, like, you know, they release a lot of the same shit as Scream Factory, something about 88 that I just like more, I don't know what it is, um, and this first one here, I've actually been seeing people picking up at Walmart for like 788, so, if you guys have Walmart's near you with those bins or whatever, and you don't have this first movie that I'm getting ready to show you, definitely check, because this movie is awesome, is the first time I watched it was not too long ago, and I loved it. That is the blob. I think I got it for like 12, 13 bucks or something, so I'm not too upset. But um, this is the uh, remake, of course, from 1988. And you get uh, reversible artwork, which is awesome. It's the same artwork without the. Uh, UK logo um or no it's not UK it's Australian I think right yeah I believe so uh awesome awesome movie love the effects it's just gory gooey it's just awesome I absolutely love it if you guys do not have this like I said check your Walmart bins they people were finding them in that 788 bin or whatever it is I don't have a 788 bin at any of the Walmarts around me, but uh, yeah, absolutely love this movie. I hate when the cover comes out of its case. Uh, I don't know. I'll fix it later. Uh, features directing The Blob, interview with director Chuck Russell, and a trailer. Not much on features, but... Uh, And we got Shawnee Smith, or however you say her name in here, from uh, the Saw movies. This one here, I definitely recommend picking this one up. This was the cheaper one of uh, the ones they had. But uh, just hours of entertainment. You just lay on the couch, turn your brain off, and just have fun with. And that is uh, Drive-In Delirium, Maximum 80s Overdrive, which you guys are probably more familiar with. This artwork because I turned it around for a reason. I do want to get the other ones, but um, they're just so expensive. This one was cheaper. Probably because it has lesser known movies on it, but uh, I turned it around because it has actually the list of every single trailer on here. But it is hours and hours of trailers from 80s. Uh, highlights being stuff like uh, Chopping Mall, Blood Diner, Evil Dead 2, The Blob, Day of the Dead, uh, Bad Dreams, Child's Play, Phantasm, Waxwork, Death Spa, Shocker, um, Raw Force, To Live and Die in L.A., uh, Class of 1984, The New Barbarians, um, The Beyond, The Black Cat, Demons 1 and 2. Uh, you even get like an intermission on here. Really, really cool set. Um, yeah. Definitely recommend that. I think that one was only like 12 or 13 bucks, too. I uh, can't remember if I got it off Amazon or eBay. Uh, I find a lot of those cheaper on eBay. A lot of these Umbrella releases. Uh, Night of the Demons. 
uh, or sorry, Night of the Night of the Demons, Night of the Creeps. Like Night of the Demons is a Scream Factory. Uh, this is my first time watching this one too, and absolutely loved it. Uh, you guys are probably more used to the artwork on this side. Uh, this is another one I highly recommend. You got uh, Tom Atkins in here and Fred Deck, uh, written and directed by Fred Decker. Yeah, who did a. Uh, My brain is just not working very well right now. Uh, Monster Squad. I was on the tip of my tongue. It won't come out. In other case, won't shut. So, yeah. Definitely recommend this one, too. Like I said, all the ones I have, I got for like $10 to $13 range off eBay. So, um, yeah. Night of the Creeps, not Demons. That's a whole nother thing. Uh, you do have features on here, though. You have audio commentary with writer-director Fred Decker, audio commentary with the cast, making of the creeps, Tom Atkins, main of action, all-new Fred Decker interview, deleted scenes, original theatrical ending, trivia track, and original theatrical trailer. So, yeah. Uh, Night of the Creeps. I'm going to keep saying it because I screwed it up. Oh, and one of my favorite remakes here, too. So glad to finally have this on Blu-ray. I know a lot of people have this one. That is Night of the Living Dead, the 1990 version with Tony Todd, uh, directed by Tom Savini. I do remember that. I know my 1990 Night of the Living Dead. Damn it. Um, audio commentary on here with Tom Savini, the Dead Walk featurette, interview with director Tom Savini, Return of the Living Dead, interview with special effects supervisors John Volick and Everett Bur 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 Burrell, Interview with lead actress Patricia Tallman. Uh, behind the scenes featurette. Yeah. Awesome movie. Love it. And you do have a... Uh, that's the thing I like about Umbrella, too. They do a lot of uh, reversible art. That's the one you guys are more familiar with. But I love this uh, cover art here. This That's awesome. I think I got that one for like 10 uh, another one of my favorite movies that is just so underrated, and I've loved this movie for so long. I uh, had it on a DVD, and you get the DVD at Walmart for like in the 374 section or whatever the hell it is, and that is The Punisher with uh, Dolph Lundgren. Uh, you get uh, on here The Punisher Unrated Cut, audio commentary with director Mark Goldblatt, Unrated Cut. Uh, the Punisher, Gold Ball Work Print, and Standard Definition. Uh, Violence Down Under, interview with, uh, Mark Goldblatt. I can't say the name. Vengeance is his, interview with Dolph Lundgren, Gag Reel, theatrical trailer. The features on here are pretty interesting. Uh, and the different versions you have on here, the uncut. Um, Yeah. Definitely worth picking up to it. Like I said, this is around 10, 12 bucks. Uh, grab this if you do not have it. Um, I mean, if you want to chance it and just get the 374 DVD, that's fine. But this transfer is awesome. And the uncut version. I have not actually watched this um, since I picked this up. But uh, I do have the DVD. Do enjoy the movie. It's not one of my favorite Stephen King uh, movies. But... Um, you get Corey Haim, Gary Busey, and Everett McGill, and Silver Bullet. A lot of people really love this movie. I don't remember it being really that great, but I haven't seen it in quite some time, so uh, definitely got to give it another watch. can't remember what this had. Um, yeah, pretty much the same artwork without the uh, rating symbol on the front here. And this one, you, you get a different back as opposed to, um, you know, back with the information on it so yeah so i'll have to rewatch this one um damn it uh features are audio commentary with director daniel Adius, the wolf within an interview with actor everett mcgill full moon fever interviews with uh sfx artist michael mccracken jr and matthew mungle uh, Dino's Angel takes on 
Look, uh, something word I can't pronounce. Somebody remembers Silver Bullet. I can't pronounce that name. Martha D. Nah, I don't know. Isolated score selections and audio interview with composer Jay Chataway. Theatrical trailer, TV spot, radio spot, and stills gallery. I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of thinking maybe I shouldn't even read the features if I can't pronounce people's names, but oh well. Silver Bullet, Stephen King, uh, novel, based. All right, so that's the uh, small umbrella collection that I have. We'll finish off with a few MBD rewinds. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Got this off Facebook group for like 15 bucks, so why not? I had a slip. Uh... I believe, yeah, had the poster in there and everything, so um, I don't think I'm ever going to hang these ones up. Of course, I don't have anywhere to hang anything right now, but maybe one day. Um, I haven't seen this movie since I was like, like a kid. I don't remember if it's even any good, so uh, you got a ton of features on here. I'm getting really parched, so I'm not even going to attempt. Um, you guys can pause it and read them if you want to. Uh, if you can, I don't know. But uh, I remember it just being a cheesy, fun, good time. It's only rated PG, I think. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. And I, ha I already had the second one in the Arrow release, so why not um, pick that up? This one here I have not watched yet. Oh, man, something happened to the slip cover. Darn it. That is uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme and Black Eagle. I hear this one's not great. Tons of features on here, though. Uh, that is not focusing at all. Yeah, that is terrible. Um, I hear he's not even in it very much, but... Uh, includes 93-minute theatrical version and the 104-minute uncut extended version so i don't know which one i should watch i'll probably watch the uncut i'm sure but um yeah black eagle this is one i grabbed for like i think it was on sale on amazon or something for like 15 bucks so i went ahead and grabbed it it was real cheap <sighs> sorry i'm just kidding <laughs> i feel bad not reading these features uh, I always enjoy sharing that with you guys. I want to see. I believe all, all all these come with posters, right? BD rewind. Da. Wish I would do reverse art on these though too. Yeah, you get a poster in there as well. I mean, cool slip covers, but I just love reverse art, especially when you have the slip and you can have both. And uh, we got the Return of Swamp Thing with Heather Locklear. Um, just recently did the uh, unboxing thing for the 88 Films uh, Swamp Thing. So I do want to watch Swamp Thing again. Swamp Thing again. And uh, watch this one. I've not seen Return. And it's been forever since I've seen the first one. This one does have a, like a different, you know, same artwork, but a little bit different. Uh, color scheme there. So, something, uh, you know, a little different. Hey, if you guys are still watching this video, thanks. Uh, oh, yeah, tons of features on here, too. And I'm terrible. I don't know. You can't read it. I I'm sorry. And, like, there's just so much on here. But, uh, let's see, there's... Mm, you get six promotional TV clips. Two Greenpeace public service announcements. So, that's good. A uh, new 2K restoration. Doesn't look like there's any, like, different cut or anything. I don't know if there ever was one. Who else is in here? Uh, nobody I know. But Heather Locklear, like, her prime... Yeah, but it's PG-13, so 
All right, we got three left. Three, three. This one I did do um, an unboxing for, I think. I don't know, check the unboxings card and maybe it's in there. And I always screw this name up. I'm trying to get it right. Abominable. I think I got it. Awesome movie. I did watch this. I think I did. Did I do a review? I don't know. Uh, really fun movie, though. It's another one that... You know, I, actually, I don't think this one was very old. Yeah, it was a 2005 release, so... It's kind of like something Screen Factory would do. Hey, ugh, Screen Factory would do how they're releasing, like, Green Inferno and shit now. Really? Not even old enough to be, whatever. Uh, poster, plain white disc, like usual. I like the snapper to be out. I don't know why. Some things are better left unfound. Tons of fun. Highly recommend this one. If you guys don't have it, get it. Uh, I did watch this one too. Um, I had the DVD forever and I never watched it. Another Jean-Claude Van Damme, who, uh, he was probably my favorite growing up out of the big action stars, and then, like, Stallone, and then, actually, like, Lundgren, and then Arnold, because, I don't know, i just never really been a big Arnold fan, except for T2 and Commando, but, uh, oh, these were numbered, too. Uh, Killer Tomatoes number two, Black Eagles number three, Swamp Thing was five, Abominable is seven, and this is eight. I do not have them all yet. I should have jumped on it when Family Video was doing their sale, but I didn't know if they were gonna come with the slips, so I kinda just didn't do it. And then people got their packages in, and all of them had slips, even the early releases, so I was like, damn it. Lionheart, though, really good movie. Enjoyed this quite a bit. Um, yeah, there's no fancy nothing with this either. Plain disc poster. I don't know, maybe once I get all of them, I'll, I'll put all the posters in line of a uh, release or something. I don't know. Lionheart, Jean-Claude. Uh, nobody else in here? No. Uh, tons of features on here, too. Um, I did watch the... Extended cut, which is 110 minutes as opposed to the 104 minute theatrical version. Uh, they have tons of features on here. Archival making of, archival interviews. Uh, of course, uh, this is just a 1080p scan. It's not no 2K or 4K or nothing, but um, tons and tons of features. I did watch, I think, all of them or almost all of them. Oops. And show the features too. Abominable. Ab now I'm screwing it up. Uh, yeah, I watched all those too. Really good features on all these. I dropped it. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, I was recording through YouTube and it just cut off. I usually don't go that long. When I've been recording through YouTube and it cut off at like 40 something minutes. Is that normal? I don't know. So, hopefully it saved all that. Uh, this isn't through YouTube right now. But, uh, yeah. Shadow Builder. Um, I don't know how I'm going to edit this together. I ended off in the one before this. Uh, Lionheart. But yeah. Nobody ever really talked about this movie. And I don't know why. I never heard any discussion about it. And uh, still don't, even the, when this got released. I really enjoyed this movie, from what I remember. It's been quite some time since I've seen it, but I remember really liking it a lot. You got Michael Rooker, Leslie Hope, Sean Thompson, Andrew Jackson, uh, Kevin Zegers, and Tony Todd in here. That is Rom Stoker's Shadow Builder. I remember this as being a fantastic movie. Uh, this is just a 1080p transfer. Um, you get visual effects feature add on here. Some other stuff. And this camera on my phone is this garbage right now. Uh, ooh. I don't know if I even noticed that. Now you do have some different artwork. 
Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's more like it there in VD. I am super excited to revisit this. I just have so much other stuff to get through right now before I can get to this. Yeah, Shadow Builder from uh, Bram Stoker. Uh, can't remember if it was a might have. Can't remember if it was a novel or a short story or. But yeah, really, really good. Definitely check this out if you have not. Awesome. And that is it, guys. That is, uh, yeah, Vestron Collection, MVD Rewind, and Umbrella. Not sure which one I'm going to do next, probably Screen Factory or Arrow or 88. I think that's all I'm doing. Uh, uh, Synapse and Blue Underground as well. I don't have very many of those. And uh, some random stuff, a couple Code Reds, uh, Indicator stuff. But, uh. Yeah, just doing the batik stuff this time around for this year. Uh, maybe next year I'll do a complete collection where I won't talk about anything and just show you guys every movie I have. I don't know. Uh, yeah, hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's had a great 2019 so far. And uh, yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts on any of those movies. Again, check out my buddy Patrick's uh, blog or whatever you want to call it. I'm terrible with like written word stuff what it's called or anything um i know this is youtube that's all i know so see you guys on the next video take care bye when the violence causes silence we might